Hello, my name is Whitney Nolenberg, and I'm talking to you today about uh, tourism and leadership, specifically in the context of partnerships, power, policy, and planning. And this is a topic that uh, I've been exploring with Dr. Nancy McGee, uh, and we're at Virginia Tech in the U.S. So one of the things that we know a lot about when it comes to sustainable tourism is the importance of things like inclusive policy, strategic planning, cooperative partnerships, and the fact that all of these are influenced by power structures, those who are actually creating the policy or initiating the strategic planning process or creating the partnerships. Uh, they all hold power and they are the ones who sort of decide how this policy is shaped, how strategic planning goes, and who's going to be included the partnerships. And while we know those are all very important components of the sustainable tourism development process, we don't know a whole lot about the actual people who do those processes. So really we're looking at who holds the responsibility to initiate, guide, implement, evaluate all of these components of the tourism development process. Uh, and really we need to look to leaders. That's, that's those folks who are going to hold that responsibility. And we've seen a little bit more work in terms of leadership lately, specifically looking at power dynamics or partnership development, but really we don't know very much about who these leaders are, where they come from, how they develop as leaders, who they look to in terms of network development and things like that. And while those are very important things to understand, uh, we, we just haven't seen that sort of work yet. And it's really crucial, as you see here with uh, the quote from Pecklinger, which supports some of the work um, from Bertelli as well, saying that we need to understand who those folks are, who those leaders are that are actually initiating those processes and seeing them all the way through uh, to final uh, components of tourism development. So. This work is really starting to look at trying to identify what do we expect from our leaders in terms of tourism development? What sort of uh, characteristics do we see in them? What sort of uh, behaviors do we expect from them? Things to that effect. And begin to gain an understanding of, of where we are with that sort of information and where we need to go. So what we're going to look at here in a little bit is actually what work has been done uh, and how that fits into these components of uh, policy, planning, partnerships, and power as a part of tourism development. So to do that, we conducted a metasynthesis, and we are looking at the literature that exists in tourism, as well as business and community development. And basically, we pulled uh, several articles, around 137 articles, from this work, uh, these, these different fields of work. And we were pulling these from journals with very high impact factor, according to ISI Web of Knowledge. And we're looking specifically for articles that focus on power, planning, policy, and partnerships with an emphasis on leadership. Now, what we saw with this, when you put in these search terms, is not so much that the main body of, of the work is on leadership. We see a lot of work focusing on power, planning, policy, or partnerships because we've identified those as com important components of sustainable tourism development. And then the conclusions, they sort of say, oh, well, leaders are going to, to be a part of this. It's important to have leadership uh, in the implementation of these items. But we don't really see a whole lot coming out of, uh, of these specific fields, especially tourism, saying this is what we expect the leaders to do. This is um, how we might see them engage in different forms of leadership, things like that. So we're really seeing lots of gaps and places that we can explore for the future. And to analyze all of this work that we that we've collected and aggregated together, we used a, we used grounded theory to find um, themes within this work. So what we found really is that all of these are sort of connected: power, planning, policy, and partnerships. As you imagine, they they come together. You can't have one without the other. So what we're uh, going to do is here is look a little bit at where we see leadership falling within all of them, and we'll go ahead and start with power. And when we're looking at the literature related to power and tourism and leadership, we see several themes emerge. Uh, style, that being the actual 
approach to leadership that that leaders use, uh, such as what we saw with Benson and Blackman's work. They were looking at how distributed leadership, which is a, a style of leadership where there's collective action and collective responsibility among various group members. There's not just one leader. We see multiple leaders within a group holding responsibility, uh, holding power in, in the tourism development process. Benson and Blackman talked about how this might be a really useful style in specifically in tourism development because it allows for multiple people to be able to address a problem. They were thinking specifically about customer satisfaction. So if we have lots of, of people who are considered leaders and who hold power uh, in tourism development, we can ensure if they all have a collective goal and a sort of collective uh, direction that they're moving in, that they can actually respond to customers in a much uh, more effective way rather than having to go to that one person who holds power and ask for permission to do something or things like that. Uh, rather, we can have lots of people being able to answer those questions. In terms of power, we also see a lot of discussion of trust, developing trust between the followers in tourism development and the leaders. Uh, and Nunku Ramkasun and uh, Gerstoy looked at that in 2012. We also see some discussion of emergence where these actual leaders gain their power from, whether it's a formal position such as in a DMO or an informal position such as a member of the community. We also see a lot of work, especially in the business literature talking about employee relations and this gets back to style a little bit as well the way that leaders actually influence their employees specifically if we're considering employees followers in this context uh, the way that they they use their power to influence employees which results in different types of uh, employee satisfaction, performance measures, things like that. And then we also see it in strategy development and the actual power that leaders use in the strategy creation process. Uh, and you'll, you're going to see here as we go through the next few um, slides that strategy is something that really emerges as a role for leaders in all of these components of sustainable tourism development. So with power, we also need to take a look at planning. And planning, of course, there's lots of literature out there on how plans are developed, how plans are implemented. We see some more literature out there on how plans are evaluated. But we have not seen a, a whole lot about the actual leadership in the planning process and who's doing that. Um, we see uh, a lot coming from um, the tourism literature in terms of involvement of minorities. Of course, this, if you think again about the importance of our inclusive policy, as you see those kind of come together there, um, that involvement of minorities is seen as a, a role for leaders when it comes to planning. Uh, we also see a lot of specific discussion, uh, such as what we see with Gretzel, Fessenmeyer, Formica, and O'Leary about DMOs as leaders. They are the ones who are seen to really uh, are supposed to initiate this planning process. Uh, they are also seen, leaders are also seen as a representative voice of the population in Formica and Cathari's work in 2008 discussing the strategic direction for the tourism industry uh, in a destination in the United States. They went out and identified leaders on their own, sort of a self-leader identification process, and asked those leaders to talk about what they thought the strategic direction for the industry was. So they were expected to be this representative voice of the tourism industry and to be able to have the knowledge and the understanding of the industry to talk about where they needed to go in terms of strategic direction. So you also will see strategy here as a theme that we saw in the planning literature related to leadership as well. Next, we have policy, which, as I mentioned, is very closely connected to the planning process. But here we see a little bit more diversification in terms of our themes within the literature. We see a lot of discussion of communication and the leader's role in initiating that communication. Uh, implementation, the people who actually need to go in and put this policy into place, uh, they're, they're the leaders that need to be doing that. Uh, in terms of knowledge, when we're talking about policy creation, act, the leaders need to hold the knowledge of what needs to be, what the policy needs to be regulating or shaping. Uh, the leaders are seen as the folks who have that knowledge and are using it in policy development. Uh, and a relationship building is, is a very 
important component of this, as McGee and Ming talk about in 2006 when they were looking at uh, U.S. legislators' opinions of the tourism industry. The legislators are telling us, well, we really need to have a relationship built with the tourism industry. And because the tourism industry is so fragmented, we can have a hard time creating those relationships sometimes. So they are looking to the leaders to help them uh, engage in that policy process to actually come out with policy that, that can help the tourism industry. Uh, we also see the importance of leaders having vision when it comes to policy uh, creation, being able to look down the road and say, this is what we need. Uh, this is what we want as an industry. And again, we see strategy here. What are the sort of strategic actions we need to take in terms of policy development? And the leaders are seen to be a very um, vital part of that. And lastly, we have partnerships. Again, a very important component of sustainable tourism development. Uh, and of course here, it makes sense we see relationship building as a big component of that and definitely something that the leaders need to be going out there, forming those partnerships, nurturing those partnerships, making sure that everyone's getting what they what they are uh, need to out of them and contributing what they need to. So we see a lot of discussion of that um, in the tourism literature, but again, sort of leaders, well, they'll do this, but not how are they going to do this or in what ways are they currently doing this, um, best practices, things like that. Uh, really, we see them as a developmental necessity because there is so much discussion about partnerships and their value to the sustainable tourism process that without these leaders coming in to create the partnerships, we're not going to have those. We need to have that sort of person to initiate and maintain those partnerships. So without them, development is very difficult um, to, to initiate. And then communication, as I, I've been saying, this sort of nurturing and, and cultivation of that comes through communication. And Bertelli talks about that quite extensively in his work in 2011 when he's talking about the actual cooperation building process in, uh, he was talking about alpine destinations in that work. And then we we also see vision come in and play a role in here, looking down the road, who's going to be the important person to partner with, who's going to help support the strategy. Leaders are expected to, to have that vision and see where partnerships need to be made. So really what we have seen with this work is that all of these components of, of tourism development, policy, power, partnerships, and planning are very interconnected. And together at the nexus, we see leaders. We've seen all of these different roles and um, different expectations for our leaders to bring together these components of sustainable tourism development. And we're calling on them to do a lot, uh, specifically in terms of developing strategy, providing vision, building relationships, but what we don't know, we don't know very much at all about the leaders themselves. Uh, we need to understand, uh, we need to expand our understanding of those, those leaders and how they become leaders, how we can shape the next leaders for sustainable tourism development, and how we can ensure that they have the resources that they need to fulfill the goals that, that we hold expectations for them. So hopefully this helps to give you a little insight on where we need to go with uh, these very important components of sustainable tourism development. I think we need to, to give ample uh, attention and, and resources to our leaders and think about them as a very important component of our sustainable tourism planning process. <music>